Hi all, this is Irissa. This video will introduce the concept of expected turn count and demonstrate its application to branching strategies in Fire Emblem. I've chosen to use the prologue of Lin Hard Mode as a demonstration, as it is a very simple map but has some variance depending on misses and dodges, and has a non-trivial chance of death present as well. This makes it ideal for showing how we can factor in all these variables to produce a single probability weighted average figure that represents the average amount of turns spent on a map when using a particular strategy. One of the main effects of using this sort of calculation is that we are able to account for the amount of resets due to failure or character death into a strategy's turn count, which ends up making more reliable strategies produce lower expected turn counts than unreliable ones. Furthermore, Expected turn count also rewards strategies that only potentially require a reset early on, when the cost is lower. This is overall beneficial to analysis of what can be considered efficient play, as strategies that are either very unreliable or very slow have already been traditionally excluded from such discussions, but agreeing on how fast or how reliable strategies should be in a more hazy middle ground has been a difficult area for people to reach consensus on. First of all, the minimum turn count for this map if you play completely safe and never have a single chance of death is 7. To do this, you only ever fight on enemy phase, or if Lin can kill her target on player phase. This clear is essentially 100% reliable, or close to it. However, we can do better than a 7 turn. But in order to get a lower turn count than 7, you have to expose Lin to some risk that can involve her dying. A 4 turn is possible with double 1% crits. But for the purposes of this video, I've simplified a few calculations and I'm going to ignore Lin's very small chance to crit and small chance to miss on the boss, as they broadly cancel each other out and have a limited effect on the turn count without double misses or double crits. A 5 turn is difficult to brute force, but can occur without too much risk if dodges work out, and a 6 turn is rather simple and pretty safe. For the first two turns of this map, you can't really do anything other than move towards the boss. The only thing you must not do is allow the brigand to potentially block Lin's way to the boss. Turn 3 enemy phase is where some branching can occur. Keeping in mind that Fire Emblem 7 uses true hit, link in the description, the chance to die on this enemy phase is roughly 10%. Roughly 47% of the time, Lin doesn't get hit at all, and 43% of the time, she gets hit at least once. 47% of the time, as Lin is at full HP, you can choose to attack the boss on turn 4 fairly safely, only inducing another 10% chance of death. So roughly 5% of the total time you die here, and roughly 42% of the time you will achieve a 5 turn clear. 43% of the time, as Lin is in death range, you can choose to transition to a safe 6 turn clear, which is essentially guaranteed by consuming a vulnerary. Or, you can choose to attack the boss again anyway, for a roughly 45% chance of death, meaning roughly 19% of the time Lin will die here, and 24% of the time you could still get a 5 turn. So now that we have the values for our clears and chances of death, how do we compute the average turn count and then factor the resets in for these different branches to compare them? This is where the formula comes in. The derivation of how we get to this formula can seem pretty intimidating if you are unfamiliar with probability, and involves breaking down an infinite series into a simpler sum. I will briefly summarize how we get here, but if you need help understanding it further, please check out an incredibly thorough pastebin link written by XEKR in the description. To calculate the expected turn count, we have to add together all possible combinations of clears and resets that either end by reaching a clear or result in the player continuing to try to clear due to a reset, and then weight each combination by its chance to occur. T is a weighted average of all the turns on which a clear can occur, and K is a weighted average of all the turns on which a reset can occur. Then, these values have to be further weighted by their chance of occurring, and added together for the final value. However, because the chance of failure is static, this means you can keep resetting forever and never clear. This results in an infinite sum. The first line is the sum of both outcomes that can happen if you attempt the strategy once, either a reset or a clear, each multiplied by their chance of occurring. 
The second line is the sum of both outcomes that can happen if you had to attack twice due to a reset on the first attempt. So the results are either reset and a clear, or reset and a reset, again multiplied by their chance of occurring. The third line is the sum of all outcomes that can happen with three attempts, either two resets and a clear, or three resets, and so on and so forth. By factoring and simplifying the formula down, then turning the infinite series into 1 divided by x, which all probabilities are as long as x is less than 1, and finally redistributing x a bit, we have the final formula. Anyway, to get back to the prologue. First, we need to work out what the average turn we successfully clear on, the conditional mean clear turn. This isn't very difficult. We just have to multiply each potential final turn by its chance to occur in order to weight them correctly and divide them by the total cure rate. Then we add them all up. For now, let's assume that we only go for the 5 turn if Lin dodges on turn 3. So we get a 5 turn clear 42% of the time and a 6 turn 43% of the time, with a total success rate of 85%, in which case our calculation would be... Now, we need the average turn that a reset occurs on, the conditional mean reset turn. Again, same principle. Multiply each potential reset turn by its chance to occur for waiting, then divide by the total chance of reset, then add them all together. Lin dies on turn 3 10% of the time, and dies on turn 4 5% of the time, for a total fail rate of 15%, so the calculation would be... Now, let's plug them into the formula. What would the expected turn count be? if we always attack the boss on turn 4 player phase though, and simply try to always get a 5 turn. Since we're only aiming for a 5 turn, we don't have to work out the conditional mean clear turn, it's just 5. However, we do need to work out the conditional mean reset turn. So, you can see that you will on average add enough extra turns via resets to result in a higher expected turn count by brute forcing a 5 turn compared to taking the 6 turn when it's safer to do so. It's also pretty obvious how adding in an extra reset possibility inflated the average turn you reset on, which knocks on into increasing the turns it's lost to resetting. From that, you can also intuitively see how incurring chances of death later in a clear will cause a harsher penalty. This applies universally, even for more reliable strategies. For example, if you only go for the 6 turn, and Lin dodged the bandit on turn 2 enemy phase, which is a 70% chance roughly, then finished him off on turn 3, then engaged the boss on turn 4 for a 10% chance of death, you might think you're incurring the same total chances of death as the normal 6 turn of only 10% total, but we can do the math to show that the amount of turns lost to resets is higher than if you always opt to take the chance on turn 3. These are some of the strategy options we've explored, we encourage attempts to find better. All you need is the turn counts and corresponding chances of clear possibilities as well as the reset possibilities, and through the use of a very simple formula, you can get a numerical sense of the efficiency to compare. That about covers it up. Thanks for watching.